Good night and welcome to Benal Madena's first English news broadcast. Digital Coastal Sol brings you every Friday all the information about this week's news. City Council continues with its commitment to the modernization of Avenida Antonio Machado and on Monday a series of videos and infographics were presented showing how the area will look like once the project is complete. The mayor of Benalmadena, Victor Navas, held a meeting with councillors and technicians from City Hall to present a video and infographics that showed the final result of the improvement and modernization works projected at Avenida Antonio Machado. Navas stressed that this is a much-needed project for the municipality. In 2018, we achieved the award of EDUCI funds for Benalmadena, thanks to which 10 million euros of investment funds came to Benalmadena. And a few weeks ago, we also achieved access to a grant of almost 3 million euros from the Next Generation Funds for the project to implement low emissions zones and sustainable mobility in this avenue. We also have our own resource after having cleaned up the public coffers of debt, adding another 2.5 million euros to the EDUCI, which includes one of the most ambitious works in recent decades, the revitalization and remodeling of the Antonio Machado Avenue. This area requires a major investment for its modernization since the road has had the same urban design since the 70s and now the old N340 will become a large boulevard. The mayor explained how it will transform the morphology of the road. With this action, we will go from 7,000 to 11,000 square meters of space dedicated to pedestrians with a lane for bicycles and new mobility vehicles, and we will add a bus lane limiting the lanes for private vehicles to two. Alternative access and exit routes to the surroundings will be enabled and we are working on a plan for dissuasive parking on the second line of the beach, in addition to developing projects for the creation of new playgrounds, green areas and spaces for the recreation of residents and tourists. This great action will help revitalize the commercial fabric of the environment, which will also present a much more pleasant, sustainable and harmonious image. He also stressed the need to revitalize the commercial fabric of the area and improve the surroundings. In this video and the accompanying infographics, you can already see the great changes and improvements that will bring the project to Avenida Antonio Machado and Ally Avenue. The video already shows one of the major changes in the original project requested by traders and entrepreneurs in the various meetings held with them. A change in the direction of the bus lane, which will now run towards Torremolinos instead of towards Fuengirola. The tactical urban planning test carried out over the last year helped us to evaluate the necessary changes to improve the final result and its impact on mobility in the area. Active listening is an essential part of our government action and we always attend to the request of groups and the productive fabric of the city, promoting measures such as the increase of improvement of public transport with initiatives such as facilitating its free use to register residents or improving the frequency of passage for the summer or the creation of new parking spaces. For his part, Centella valued the growth of the city, highlighting the need to modernize it. Benalmadena has already become a large city which exceeds 70,000 registered inhabitants and it is time that this growth is accompanied by the modernization of certain urban areas. This urban renewal is especially necessary in Benalmadena Costa, a real economic engine of the city today and on the foreseeable future. From the government team and thanks to the support of the European Union EDUCI funds, we continue to work for the conversion of the coastal environment in a modern, comfortable and environmentally sustainable space. After Junta's decree returning the Ligaron lands to Benal Madena, its rightful owner, now Fuengirola has initiated proceedings to dispute this decision. The government team is making clear that they are going to fight to defend the interests of the residents. 
the mayor of Benalmadena, Victor Navas, and urban planning councilwoman, Marie Isabel Ruiz, held a press conference last week to inform on the dispute between the town hall and Fuengirola regarding the El Higueron lands. The neighboring municipality is trying to dispute its ownership to Benalmadena after the resolution of Junta de Andalucía that returned the land to our municipality rightful owner. As stated in the current Demarcation Act, these lands have always belonged to Benalmadena. The political stability that we have brought to this city council is bringing many advantages to Benalmadena and this is one of them. In 2006, we already discovered the appropriation of this land by Fuengirola through a partial development plan, but in a period of 10 years, there were up to five different governments in our municipality, a circumstance that made it almost impossible to claim the ownership of that area. Navas explained that the Castrato has already registered the citizens of the area in our municipality. Upon our arrival to the municipal government in 2015, we tried to solve all those projects and administrative problems that remain stalled, something that we have only been able to achieve thanks to political stability. The Castrato has already included the citizens who reside there as residents of Benalmadena, citizens who have been receiving services for years by our consistory, but Fuengirola persists in denying this fact and now is trying to push a new demarcation to reappropriate this land. In addition, he stressed that they are not trying to threaten the city council of Fuengirola and have always sought dialogue, but they are forced to defend the interest of our citizens to the last instance. We will again oppose this and we are studying the possibility of claiming damage to Fuengirola for all the time that these lands have been in its planning in an irregular way. This isn't a threat. It is about seeking with them a solution, as we have always tried so far. But if these are their intentions, we will demand the city of Fuengirola to pay all that corresponds for the time we have offered public services to the residents of the area without collecting a single penny for it. Ruiz recalled that already in the last plenary session, the corporation showed its opposition to the proceedings initiated by Fuengirola. In the last plenary session, we approved the corporation disagreement with the modification of boundaries huge from Fuengirola. This is an issue that has long been under discussion since our city council became aware of the occupation of land adjacent to the Higueron area by Fuengirola, which led to several legal and administrative actions so that the Andalusian government officially recognized that this area belongs to Benalmadena. In October 2020, through a resolution of the Cartographic Institute, the claims made from our city council were given the reason, recognizing that area as part of our municipality, certifying the full validity of the Demarcation Act from 1874. Finally, she explained that she does not understand the position of the neighboring city council. Since that resolution, our city council assumed as its own that territory and we are already working to incorporate it into the planning, already having a resolution of the regional government. We do not understand the position taken by the city council of Fuengirola. It is an area whose services have always been in our municipality, having to move their neighbors almost seven kilometers to go to those located in Fuengirola, besides being the municipal water company of Benalmad which supplies the homes located there. From the city council, we will continue to defend these lands and we have already urged its inclusion in our general urban development plan. Benalmadena is a multicultural municipality where many different nationalities coexist and the consistory tries to maintain communication channels with the various associations with visits like the one received by the Finnish Association this week. The mayor of Benalmadena and foreign residence councilman Victor Navas held a meeting on Monday with the Finnish Social Cultural Association of Benalmadena, whose headquarters are located at the Minerva building in Arroyo de la Miel. The mayor was received by its president, Mari Henriksson, and other members with whom he chatted about the activities they perform, as well as their concerns and demands as citizens of the municipality. 
Ben Almadena currently has 739 registered residents from Finland, which makes it one of the largest communities of foreigners in the municipality. A fully integrated community that here in the Minerva building has its club, where they participate in all kinds of social and cultural activities, from Spanish classes to board games. We've discussed several topics of importance to them, getting to know firsthand their concerns and demands. Navas highlight the diversity of our municipality, where more than 130 nationalities coexist. If there is a municipality that welcomes with open arms people from all over the world, that is Benalmadena, an open and cosmopolitan city where more than 130 nationalities coexist harmoniously, which makes us an example of tolerance and harmony. From the City Council, we lend our collaboration with all the foreign residents' associations as they are another instrument in favor of multiculturalism and integration in Benalmadena. The association has more than 200 members in Benalmadena and its president, Mary Henriksson, spoke to us about the activities they organize, also stressing the importance of registering in the Padrón. I've the president of our association for more than one year now. We are honored to receive the mayor in our headquarters and to have the opportunity to speak with him about different topics that matter to our community. The association organizes Spanish lessons, painting courses, we also play cards or petanca. We are urging everyone to register in the Padrón as it will benefit the municipality's health and security services. Our municipality keeps showing support and solidarity to Ukraine, and now City Hall has organized a motor group to channel all the help that is being offered, organizing all the war so it is carried out efficiently. General Administration Councilman Sergio Torralbo, Councilwoman and Provincial Deputy Irene Díaz, and Health Councilman Juan Carrillo held a press conference on Tuesday to inform about the creation of a motor group to channel the support of all the people in the municipality interested in helping or welcoming Ukraine citizens. These people are victims of a dramatic and unfortunate situation as a result of the despicable invasion by the Russian army, and we are working on providing information and advice to help the citizens of Ukraine. Anyone interested in helping or collaborating can obtain information on a telephone number created by the City Council for this purpose, 952-579-895 or on the email address you see on your screen. In addition, the municipal website has created a series of links of interest for those who want to collaborate. All this aid work will be centralized through the Red Cross as it could not be otherwise due to its extensive experience in helping war victims. Benalmadena is a municipality of solidarity and has always demonstrated it, as recently happened in pandemic. Díaz spoke about the campaign organized by Protección Civil and other initiatives highlighting the solidarity that characterizes our municipality. We want to remember that civil protection has already recently started a campaign to collect first aid material in coordination with the pharmacies of the municipality, a great effort that the municipal government appreciates. In addition, in Benalmadena, there is a collection point for donations of basic necessities for the Ukrainian people in the Prosvita Ukrainian Cafeteria, located on Avenida Manuel Mena in Benalmadena Costa. Then she explained how the new motor group will organize its work. Will work in a transversal way, counting also with the participation of Social Welfare Council woman Alicia Ladaga. The idea is that from all areas of the city council we join efforts so that the work is as fruitful as possible. There is also a general helpline dedicated to the war crisis in Ukraine at 900-221-122 in addition to another telephone number dedicated to the work of family reunification 
from the Motor Group will also be informed weekly, whenever there are new developments, to all partners of the Andalusian Fund of Municipalities for International Solidarity to work more operationally and efficiently. We cannot remain impassive to this horror. From here, we will do everything in our power to help guide and advise Ukrainian families. The collection Plants Fair comes back to our streets this year and it will be held at Parque de la Paloma from April 15 to April 17. Cactus, succulents and other rare species will be the main attraction of this event with more than 40 exhibitors. Parks and Gardens Councilman Joaquin Villazón and the delegation's technician and organizer of the event, Jose Maria López, present last Friday the 15th edition of the Collection Plants Fair, which will be held at Parque de la Paloma from April 15 until 17 with free access. The fair consists of an exhibition with those botanical genres less known, such as succulents, tropicals or cactus, among many others. The event is held in the best possible setting at Parque de la Paloma, so we encourage you all to come and enjoy some of these collection plants, very difficult to find elsewhere. For his part, López highlights the growth of these events that celebrates its 15th edition over the years. This year, the fair returns to be held to coincide with Easter, after two years in which this was not possible due to the pandemic, thus returning to its usual date in the middle of spring, a time when fans begin to acquire new plants for their gardens. After 15 editions, it is a fully consolidated event and each year attracts more followers and attendees with the incorporation of new exhibitors, collectors and new families of plants. The organizer spoke about the rising popularity of this type of events and thanked the collaboration of FCC and Viveros Guzman. A remarkable aspect is that more than half of the exhibitors are neither nurseries nor professionals in this field, but amateurs, which shows that it is an activity with great citizen participation in which there is also room for individuals and neophytes. It is the only event of its kind in Andalusia, which has made it become a benchmark. We expect to have more than 40 exhibitors, national and international, so we may have to expand the space we normally use given the success of the call. Every year we see new plants, even a high percentage that have not even been named yet, in addition to the usual plants for those who are starting in this hobby. And these are today's headlines. New video to explain the project for Avenida Antonio Machado. The dispute for the Ligaron lands continues. Navas holds some meeting with Finnish residents. Ben Almadena supports Ukraine. Cactus, succulents and other rare species at the collection Plants Fair. The weather forecast for the weekend will leave us with Slightly cloudy skies with intervals of low clouds and cloudiness of diurnal evolution without ruling out weak showers on the west coast, more lightly in the late hours. Morning mist in the interior and temperatures with slight chains, variable light winds tending to ease and increasing during the day with a strong gust. And that's all. Thank you for watching us and remember you can stay updated on our website or social media profile on Facebook and Twitter. Have a good night and enjoy the weekend.